Oh, the fishing is free with your disability. You don't need a license like the rest. Movies are half the price. Well, isn't that nice? And the parking spots are nothing but the best. So don't you wish that you were disabled? Disabled is a better way to be. With crutches, canes, and braces, and wheelchairs to run races. Oh, don't you wish that you were just like me? And we're back listening to The Largest Minority on WBAI 99.5 FM in New York. And we are uh, happy to be joined by uh, Lisa Quinones uh, Fontanes. I apologize for the delay in getting to you. Thank you very much for your patience. How are you? Good. How are you? Great. Great. Um, I don't know if you've been listening, but we were just talking with uh, um, Savannah Logs and Breakstone, who's a, an activist and an advocate out in uh, Pennsylvania. Yes. Um, Tell us a little bit about your experience and, and about your website, which is AutismWonderland.com. Yes. So um, I started my blog about two years ago as part of a class assignment. I'm a graduate student at CUNY. And, City um, College. Let's, let's represent like we mean it. <laughs> This is, this is how I know, I know Lisa. This is how I met Lisa. Actually, was through City College, but yeah. So um, I started my blog just as a class assignment, and I just and um, I kept up with it after the class was finished. When my son was diagnosed in 2008, um, mm-hmm. all the books that I had read about autism were mostly written by upper middle class Caucasian women who, and many of them, were able to kind of quit the careers and stay at home with their children. Um, I'm a working mom. I go to school Mm part-time. Quitting my job wasn't really an option. Mm -hmm. And living in the Bronx, um, resources were just very limited. So I really had to, you know, be on the computer and talk to other parents and try to find the most appropriate resources for my son. And Mm -hmm. so when I started my website, I just wanted to share everything that I had learned Mm -hmm. with other parents. And being Puerto Rican, I feel like within the Latino community, there is such a stigma Mm -hmm. with having a disability. So I wanted to talk about it and say, you know, it's okay, my son is okay, um, like Savannah was saying, I, you know, about being broken, I would never thought of my son as being broken or wanting to fix him. Mm-hmm. Um, I alternate between using um, autism or autistic. It, it doesn't matter to me what mm-hmm. people refer to him as. Mm-hmm. He's only six. Mm-hmm. When he gets older, he can tell me. He can tell me what he prefers. But for now, you know, I I try to alternate. Um, mm-hmm the 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 terms but i just wanted i just kind of wanted to share my experience and just share what works for us and our family and let other you know people know that you know you can work and you can go to school and you can find the appropriate services and you don't need to be rich um as so long as you know the law Mm -hmm. and you know you're a strong advocate for your child you will make i'll always get what he needs because i've always had to to fight and Mm -hmm. parents just need to know that they are the first advocate for their children no one is going to fight the way that a parent would fight for their child it is an interesting it is an interesting thing and it's part of what well i mean i was discussing a little bit with savannah about the the notion of the self-advocacy thing Mm -hmm. but but it is a thing that is um uh the, 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 I, I'm wondering if you if you came across any of this sort of like if there was any dissonance, let's say, or um, like when it, uh, working as a parent, you know, representing your child, when mm-hmm. you if you if you're working with a group of people who are maybe working mainly for adults or or adults uh, issues, that um, they may react differently to to your presence or your uh, your input than than somebody who's actually a person with an, an adult. An autistic adult, uh, you know, I keep, there's so many different ways of, you know, climbing around the couch of these these terms, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm just curious what the, what what if if you had any uh, if, if as a parent there was any sort of a clash with the other the larger autism community or autistic community. Um, I think there's always going to be you know different opinions. I mean. Mm-hmm. <sighs> 
I was trying, I was I mean, within the question, autism actually. community, there's so much disagreement about vaccines and a cure mm-hmm. and food and diet and methods mm-hmm. and ultimately... Well, that's, that's lightly of the parents, too, though, right? Um, I mean, yes. Yes. The, the the idea of like was this caused by a vaccine or there because there are people that do there are people that have had success or I've heard about that anyway at least and again it's apocryphal uh, with like diet and stuff like that so mm-hmm. um, but I'm sorry I, I I apologize I cut you off I didn't mean to do that so um, I mean ultimately you just have to kind of do what's best you know for your child like Savannah said you know if you've met one person with autism then you've met one person with autism so there's mm-hmm. no I mean, what works for me isn't, and and for my son, isn't necessarily going to work, you know, for somebody else. But, you know, it may, and it's all kind of like trial and error Mm -hmm. and learning as you go. And, you know, I'm still, you know, every day I'm learning something new. Hearing Savannah talk was just um, really eye-opening for me because, like I said, my son is only six. Yeah. He, you know, can speak, but... You know, a lot of his speech is, you know, scripted. So it's from whatever he's memorized from books or movies or, you know, what he hears other people saying. Uh So he can't really, he doesn't really know or he can't form his opinion just yet. But one day he will. And I'm looking forward to that day. I mean, I really Mm -hmm. want to know what's going inside his head. So when I hear someone um, like Savannah talking, it just gives me more insight to my own child. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's also a different thing because I mean, had had your son, and I'm just reading off of your website. His name is Norrin. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I presume it's okay that we can, yes, we can, Norrin, can yes. give him a shout out. Uh, <laughs> and again, your website is called Autism Wonderland. And I was going to ask you briefly about that because of the like, literary reference there. Mm-hmm. But but you know, if you ha- if he had been diagnosed even five years earlier, it it was a, probably a, a, a much different. Uh, environment even then in terms of what what the um public we could say awareness and or acceptance of um or understanding of 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 autism as a as a as a as a condition as a situation uh yeah. has changed even remarkably from that time and mm-hmm. you know just hearing you the way you're talking about it um it sounds like you know uh your son's going to have much more support than someone who maybe was was uh, autistic 20 years ago Oh, no, definitely. I mean, I mean, I didn't even know what autism was Mm -hmm. before he was diagnosed. I mean, I really had no clue. I had, um, when I first suspected that there may be something going on, I mean, I really had to read and learn, you know, Mm -hmm. what autism was. In my head, it was every single stereotype that you see. It was Rain Man, and my mom was you know, convinced, she's like, oh, he's not like that, and you don't have to worry about that, and he's fine. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I really just didn't know what it was, and I had to, you know, educate myself, and I had to kind of, you know, learn all over again how, how, just, I mean, when I was pregnant, I, I was reading all these books, you know, trying to, you know, study what it was like to be a parent and mm. when he got the autism diagnosis it was like oh okay i need to use a whole different set yeah. of books <laughs> it was like a crash course i'm like okay mm. you know i have to figure this out um was there anything you found particularly helpful when you were um, in the course of that uh in the course of your reading research um there is there was like one book that i read and it's called and i can't remember the author's name i think her name is ellen Nuff Baum, and it's called Ten Things. I'm trying to look it up because I just like wrote about it yesterday. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like Ten Things a Child with Autism. Ten Things Every Child with Autism Wishes You Knew. So that uh-huh. just kind of it was like one of the first books that I read, and I think that everybody should read it because it just made me it just made me see him. Differently, mm-hmm. I think that people need to be aware of autism, and but they also need to be able to look beyond it. I mean, mm-hmm. autism won't stop him from doing whatever he wants to do. Right. It's. I mean, it's it's a disability, but I think that his um, 
he's not limited. You know, he can have a friend and he will be able mm-hmm. to go to school mm-hmm. and he has the capacity to learn. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that he should be um, pigeonholed into a stereotype of just some kid, you know, standing in a corner flapping his hands. He's mm-hmm. he's more than that. I mean, he has all those, he does have the stereotypical behaviors of an autistic child, but, you know, you need to be able to work around that and, you know, get him to focus and be patient and try to engage him. Mm-hmm. It's it's an interesting thing because it, 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 one of the things that I love to kind of like focus on on the show is the ways in which uh, an, an, an issue or even in this case to some extent a solution that affects people with a disability or people in that community um, has an application for real life. And there's a way in which the way you're describing your relationship with, with your son and and your your uh, role as a parent mm-hmm. is something that is is definitely specific to your individual. I, I mean, I mean, you know, the you know, when you when you meet one parent with <laughs> one parent of an autistic person, you've met one parent of an autistic person. Yeah. <laughs> but at the same time, it sounds to me very much like the stuff that you're 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 talking about is stuff that is is advice or is is an approach that I any any parent should have and really ideally. Mm-hmm. Can and you know to some extent, I mean this goes to a broader idea about um, acceptance of a lot of different kinds of differences with people and their kids. You know, I mean again, uh, you know, autism has changed only more recently, but even going back, it hasn't been that long ago that you know, uh, you know, I mean, finding out that your son was gay, you know, fifty years ago was like you know a tragedy that was befallen on the on the house, you know, or you know whatever. And, um, or, you know, in some cultures and in some, for some people. And so I think that the, the, the experience of, of, of parents with, uh, kids, and particularly in this case, a, a disability that is, is, you know, more or less, um, not as visible as, say, a person in a wheelchair, a person, you know, with some kind of, um, different body type, um, but more of a behavioral thing that, that isn't immediately detectable, mm-hmm. you know. It leads to a different um, philosophy, maybe, and a different approach to parenting. That is something that can be useful and a, a, a good lesson, I guess you could say, for for any parent. Yeah. You know. Um, so, and 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 I mean, just very briefly, we're actually just about out of time. Mm-hmm. But um, I really, I, I also think it's really cool, and it's something that people should see on your website again, which is autismwonderland.com, which is the um, the the factor that that you you're in a uh, the Latino community, which is uh, you know every you know every unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. To yeah. <laughs> Tolstoy, you know, the different communities uh, culturally have different relationships with disability, and so it's an interesting aspect. Yes. Uh, of the Def- yes, definitely. <laughs> uh-huh. um, is there anything coming up, or is there anything particularly you'd want to um, add for the? Uh, Actually, no, there is something coming up. Tell us about the, 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 the walk that's coming up in June. Well, on June 3rd, Autism Speaks will have their walk now for autism, and it takes place at the seaport. It's a really, um, it's a really great event. It was my son, Norrin, was diagnosed in May and mm. of 2008, and that June we participated in the walk, and it was just, it was really, um, it was just really comforting to be around other families who were kind of going through the same thing that you were going through, who kind of understood you, who mm-hmm. understood your child. Yeah. Um, and whether or not you agree with the philosophy behind Autism Speaks, I just think that what they do for the overall community is helpful. Mm-hmm. And again, like even if you don't agree with their philosophy, um, it's, it's just nice to know that that support system is is out there and i think it's important for other parents to kind of um have that support because you know you may have other family members or friends and they don't necessarily get it they don't understand what you're talking about they don't Mm -hmm. understand the acronyms you have to pause and you know explain you know everything so it's it's just it's been really helpful to me to kind of build that um community support so, okay. I mean, even well, if you don't agree, yes. it's just well, the support behind it is all right. great. We, we are out of time. Thank you so much, uh, Lisa, very much for being on the program today. Thank you today. for having me.
No, my pleasure. My pleasure. I'm really glad it worked out. I want to thank uh, uh, Savannah Logson Breakstone as well and the um, uh, Autistic Self Advocacy Network. I want to thank everyone who participated in today's broadcast. And uh, if you'd like to contact us, we can reach by email at largestminority at gmail.com on Facebook. Uh, which is just search for Largest Minority Radio Show on Facebook. And you can also find out about the upcoming showing for a dis- dislabeled uh, film series, which is uh, at...